that God made. So we will study his world and how it relates to his word, the Bible, at the same time. I have my friend Christopher here with me as my assistant for today's experiment. And Christopher, I'm glad to see that you have your safety goggles and your gloves on because we want to make sure that we do things as safely as possible. And we have several chemicals that we're going to be using today to make a reaction. Any guesses as to what might happen, Christopher? Um, let's say, uh, well, um, let me guess. Are we making, well, I don't know what we're making because really, okay, I don't know what this can equal up to. Well, good, because then you'll be surprised. I'll be surprised because I've never done a science experiment before. There you go, but you've got in front of you a beaker, and you'll notice that your beaker has some liquid in it, right? Mm -hmm. Now that liquid is hydrogen peroxide, not the kind that you would probably have in your bathroom. This is a special 40 volume hydrogen peroxide that we need for this particular experiment. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our beaker and we're gonna take some food coloring and go ahead, you can take the lid off of your food coloring. That's perfect. And you're gonna put about eight drops in. So you can just drop, drop, drop. So now that we have added our food coloring to our hydrogen peroxide, we're just gonna mix it a little bit. And then you can go ahead and put it down. And the next thing that we're going to add is some dish soap. So just pour that in. I if it'll turn purple now. And once that's poured in, we're going to swirl it around a little more. Perfect. Yep, you can go ahead and swirl it. It's not mixing quite as quickly. All right. So we will let that sit. And we have two other things that we're going to combine. We're going to pour yeast into half a cup of warm water. So go ahead and pour that in. Perfect, and same thing, we're just gonna pick it, pick it up and gently just let that combine. And we'll go ahead and put that down. And we are ready for a real reaction that we have on the tray. Perfect is our hydrogen peroxide solution and our yeast. And you find the little spout, we're gonna use that to pour this into this. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> and there you have it, Christopher. That is called elephant toothpaste. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, mine's still going. All right, girls here, why don't you take your extra beaker off and set it aside. And we'll see how much of this pink foam we get. Oh, I'm about to overflow. Are you overflowing yet? Not yet. It's going to overflow. It is going to overflow. Right in back. <gasps> it's overflowing. It and it's me. So did you think it would make this many bubbles? Uh, no, I, I thought it would actually like, bubble up. I'm just going to overflow. It's going to overflow if I, if I don't mess with it. Right. Well, Christopher, you can keep playing with it. But you know, this reminds me of a verse in the book of First Thessalonians. Now, First Thessalonians is a small book in the last part of the New Testament. And in First Thessalonians 3, verse 12, we read, May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else. We all want to be more loving to others. We try to get along with our siblings and obey our parents and share with our friends, but it's hard and sometimes it feels impossible. If we want our love for others to truly overflow, we need to ask for God's help. And here's how he helps us. He teaches us about love in the Bible. He speaks to our hearts when we pray and he fills our spirits when we worship. These things together cause a reaction of overflowing love, just like the chemical reaction in our elephant toothpaste. So prayer, the Bible, and worship cause the reaction 
that we're looking for of overflowing love. Christopher, thanks for coming today. It was great to have you. And kids, I hope you have a great week. Peace be with you.